Hey guys, it's CSFan001 here, welcoming you to another one of those weekly trophy list update videos. Today's date is Monday, March 23rd, 2020. We're now in week two of pretty much locking everything in life down because of the virus that shall not be named. And yeah, it's uh, it's going about as well as you'd probably expect. But to be fair, as a gamer, it's not the worst thing in the world because I'm already enough of an introvert. Anyway... Uh, I want to talk about that at a little bit at the end of the video, but uh, for now, we're here to talk about trophies. So, there's actually two other games I did a little bit on. One of them is Red Dead Redemption. I actually did find, like, new people to try to do the uh, co-op missions with, but we still haven't had schedules and stuff work out exactly right, because my other partner probably isn't going to be able to play for a while because he's over in Europe and everything going on. So, I don't know when that's going to get done, but hopefully in the near future. I mean, of course, it's only six co-op missions, six advanced co-op missions. I think I can get it done eventually. It's going to take a little bit of skill, a little bit of luck, a little bit of patience, but we will get through it eventually. Uh, the other one, I don't know if we're actually going to find it down here or how far down I'm actually going to have to scroll for it. But with Destiny 2, of course, there is still the Triumph Seal to work on, which is what I'm currently working on still. I actually finished my last Heroic Adventures I needed, so all I have left are the Destinations Collections badges for Curse of Osiris, Warmind, and Forsaken. So yeah, that's kind of awesome. Made some progress on that. Finished up all those stupid Heroic Adventures. Still have to do this, which I'll need to find a group for. Same with the Raid. I know that neither one's overly difficult, but, you know, it's, it's something that's going to take time. It's going to take playing in a group, so it, it is what it is. So, as for games I actually earned trophies in this week, there were two of them. Resident Evil 6, we are so close to being done with this game. So, last week I had finished Ada's campaign. Because this will be covering the 16th through the 22nd. So, the main thing I did this past week was, there was only a few trophies earned. One of them, or two of them, was completing the game on Professional. So, Professional in this game is really not that hard compared to Resident Evil 4 or 5. I know that in 5 you could still have the infinite rocket launcher, and I don't think this game actually has an infinite rocket launcher, which is interesting. But Professional is pretty easy for the most part because you don't tend to die extremely fast if you have the right skills. Your AI partner actually does revive you sometimes in this game. Uh, and then that's a big part of it, is the AI, your AI partner, they can be stupid at times for sure. But they don't need to be healed, they don't need to be revived, they don't need to be given ammo or weapons. Hell, I'm not entirely sure they can even die in most sections of the game. So that's honestly makes this a lot easier. And this was also my 18,000th trophy completing the game on Professional, so there will be a slightly separate video for that eventually. So pretty awesome there, hit 18,000 total trophies. But yeah, I mean, it's not, it's not really all that hard in this game. There's a handful of sections throughout the game that can be tougher, especially if you don't have all the skills yet. I would recommend Firearm Level 3, Defense Level 3, and Infinite Shotgun Ammo. Because you get a shotgun with most of the characters in the game, and the shotguns are generally strong enough that they'll work fine. You could theoretically use, like, a Magnum or an Assault... Well, no, I would say Magnum, probably, because not every character really gets an Assault Rifle, but also not every character gets a Magnum, so you gotta keep that in mind. But it's really not that hard overall. There was just a handful of tough sections in the game, and they were nowhere near as challenging as some of the more tough areas of... Resident Evil 4 or 5, I would say that the vast majority of my deaths on Professional were either done on purpose, because if you die, you go back to the last checkpoint with full health bar. So it's an extremely easy way to heal yourself. So I took advantage of that constantly. So would highly, highly recommend making sure that you do that whenever you get on low health. It makes the game significantly easier. So that was one thing I did, and then... What was the other? Uh, no, nah, I don't really remember what else I was going to say with that. But anyway, completed the game on Professional, and yeah, that's awesome. Got that done. So the only trophy left is to max out the skills that allow you to level up. I am maybe halfway through this. This is a very grindy trophy. It'll take me probably another solid five hours to get through. It's not difficult. There's a very easy way to grind XP in this game, or grind skill points, I mean. There's a very easy way to do it. It just, it takes a long time, and it's just, it's not fun, you know? It's just another boring grind in a Resident Evil game. I mean, 5 had something like this. 
7 can potentially have stuff like this in the DLC, depending on how you do certain modes. Uh, it's just, it's just kind of a boring kind of waste of time, but hey, you know, it'll, it'll get me the gold, it'll get me the platinum, it'll be another Resident Evil game done. I'm actually gonna go ahead and pick up Resident Evil 2 because it's on sale and because, well, there's a virus going around, so might as well. And then I think I got at least one other trophy this time around. I think I got this trophy, the, uh, get 10 kills with every weapon. There's only about 22 weapons that you have to do this with. You don't have to do it with all the grenades or the RPG or the gun turret or any of those. A couple of them are a little bit tougher, but you can get a lot of your kills in mercenaries mode with a lot of the characters. There's a few that you might have to do with specific characters within the specific chapters of the campaign. But for the most part, this is pretty easy. It's not going to give you a whole lot of trouble. You might even get it through nearly natural progression just by completing the campaign twice and actually let me go back to professional real quick here uh another thing about professional in this game is that if you don't want to do an entire chapter you can actually spawn in at the final checkpoint of any chapter and if you do that you will you just have to complete the final checkpoint or the final section it'll be divided into you know like one five or one like one 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 two one three one four one five etc and you only have to complete that final section of the level. And if you do it that way, obviously that saves a lot of time. Now, the guides will generally recommend not to do that because you're going to need so many skill points to level up all the skills. So that would just greatly increase your grinding time. But I would say that there's at least some levels where you should consider doing that just because of how long some of the levels are in this game. Because especially in, like, Leon's campaign, the chapters are insanely long. Like... You can finish both Resident Evil 4 and Resident Evil 5. You could beat either of those in the time it takes to finish Leon's campaign playing it like a normal person, which is a little bit absurd to think about. Same, like, you could beat Resident Evil 2 and 3 and Resident Evil 1. You could beat pretty much any other Resident Evil game except maybe 7 in the time it takes to complete just Leon's campaign. Actually, you could probably also finish 7 now that I think about it. So that is a really helpful tactic. I would suggest doing that on some of the longer levels, like some of Leon's campaign, it will definitely speed up the process. I also did it for a couple of Chris's chapters just because I don't like Chris's campaign. And I think I did it for one of Jake's chapters as well, like the very last Jake chapter because I don't like that chapter either. But it's, I mean, it, it makes the game a lot easier. So it's not, it makes the Platinum a lot easier than it would have been otherwise. Or just, it saves a lot of time in terms of going for professional difficulty. But it does mean you're going to have to spend a little more time grinding out XP, unfortunately. Or skill points, I always want to call it XP. But, I mean, that's just a grind that's very easy to do because you can do it on Amateur. Uh, this is the other trophy I got. Let me make sure that I'm correct in saying that that's the only other one I got. It is. So, this trophy is for killing 100 enemies that come out of a crystal lid. I'm pretty sure that as long as you complete the game twice, you're guaranteed to get this. I don't think it's missable at that point, unless you're skipping through every chapter on Professional, in which case I'm, I'm pretty sure that no matter what, you would get this while grinding skill points if you're using the method provided in the guides of playing through the first part of Chris Chapter 5 and just using the infinite shotgun to go haywire on all the crystalid and other enemies that spawn in that one room that you have to hold off for two and a half minutes. So yeah, getting close to finishing that game in terms of trophies, it's going to take some time, but hey, you know, I'm going to have plenty of time this week and probably the week after, so yeah. And then the other game I started working on, Black Ops 2. So we are back to Black Ops 2, finally, and making some progress in the game, so... As for trophies, I got this Platinum a long time ago, and I'll go ahead and talk about the Platinum here because it's been so long since I've gotten trophies in the campaign, like before, I mean, I got the Platinum before I ever started doing these videos, more than a year before I started doing these videos. So, to get the Platinum, this is one of the tougher Call of Duty games to get the Platinum in. All of these trophies are, well, actually, no, not all of these trophies, well... Yeah, I think all of those trophies are story-related ones, so for completing the 11 campaign missions, let's see if that even makes sense. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Yeah, okay, so those are the 11 campaign trophies. Those are just, you know, straight up complete the campaign on any difficulty, you'll get those trophies. Then you have two trophies for completing the campaign on Veteran. Veteran in this game is not very difficult because you had, you had loadout select. 
So you could just use the Storm PSR in every level. It's that chargeable sniper rifle that shoots through walls and stuff with the thermal scope. You could just use that and very easily get through everything on Veteran. Uh, and then you have the challenges. I'll come back to the challenges in a moment. Complete all challenges in one level in any one challenge. Those are pretty much tough to miss. So then we get the miscellaneous trophies in the campaign that are that have to do with either specific missions, specific decisions, or the Strike Force missions, which were optional missions you could play if you wanted to influence your ending, but you had to do them all to get the Platinum Trophy. I believe that these three were all trophies from the Spec Ops, or not Spec Ops, I want to keep calling it Spec Ops, and then these two as well. So I think that those five trophies are the ones that come from completing the five Strike Force missions successfully. Maybe I could be wrong on that. There might be some that are specific to other campaign missions that I don't really remember. Uh, you have to complete the campaign on Hardened or Veteran. I don't know why that trophy is so out of order. That just doesn't make any sense. I do know that this one comes from finishing the last Strike Force mission, which you can only get if you do the other ones before it. So I do know for a fact that that's where that comes from. So then we get to all of the various miscellaneous trophies that have to do with different decisions made during the campaign. This one, I believe you have to shoot a specific target in the leg twice instead of in the head when told to during the last flashback mission. This one, you have to drive properly during the driving section of one of the future missions. This one, I believe, comes after you make very specific decisions in one section of the game. I mean, that's really what all these are. It's been so long since I have played this campaign and since I got a lot of these trophies. But yes, in this case, you will have to replay certain missions a couple of times to just to obtain some of the trophies for the storyline because this game had branching storyline paths, which is one of the things that made it a really good game and a really underrated Call of Duty game. In my opinion, one of the last good Call of Duties, at least until Modern Warfare 2019 came around. So then you have Collect All Intel. There's three Intel pieces in every mission. I don't think they're in the Strike Force missions. Then you have this one, which is very much unmissable. Like, just use any futuristic weapon in Chapter Select in a previous mission. Like, in one of the old school missions, complete level with a customized loadout. Pretty much impossible to miss. I don't remember how you get this one. This one's probably you know, a chapter-specific trophy. You have to score 10,000 points in every mission. This really isn't that hard if you're doing all the challenges and stuff. Then we get to the multiplayer trophies. There are only five multiplayer trophies in this game, but they are what makes this the only currently unobtainable Call of Duty Platinum. You have to reach level 10 and prestige once, which are still completely obtainable if you can avoid getting into hacked lobbies that will screw you up. You have to win 10 multiplayer games in combat training and 10 in the party games playlist. I don't know how possible the party games one is. I don't know if it's still populated enough. But this trophy right here, Big Leagues, this trophy is unobtainable because league play is not in existence anymore. So you will not be able to get this trophy. Therefore, if you did not get this back in the day, you are screwed out of the platinum. So as you can see, though, I got it about a month after the game came out. So I was in perfectly good shape on that. And then we have these zombies trophies for the base game. You have the Easter egg here, which is... It was frustrating to me. I had a lot more trouble with it than I thought I would, but eventually got it. This one is also just a little bit tricky because you have to be a little bit careful with it, but it's still pretty easy. And then all the other trophies are very easy. You know, pacify 10 zombies with a single EMP grenade. Uh, complete all additions to the bus in a single game. There's only three of them. Pick up your tombstone. You can easily go for that one in a specific game. Like, you might want to go for certain ones of these, just one of these trophies per game or something. But they're all pretty easy if you do it that way. Same with, you know, four different equipable items. That one's a little more annoying and a little more luck-based. Uh, this one, you have to kill the Avogadro without getting hit by him. You just throw an EMP grenade at him and you'll kill him. You might be able to get this while going for the Easter egg. Uh, the denizens, you'll probably get this one no matter what. This one, you can get very easily. You just kill a you knife one of the denizens when you're underneath one of the specific lampposts. Uh, buy two different perks before turning on the power. You're going to need the generator and you're going to need the... Uh, yeah, you're just going to need the generator and points. And then let's go back to the challenge trophy because this is the big one in this game. Giant accomplishment. Complete all challenges. You have to complete every regular mission without dying. You have to complete... You have to collect all the intel... You have to complete every Strike Force mission without... What is it that you have to do in every Strike... There's something you have to do in every Strike Force mission. It's like complete it without losing units or something. Or no, complete it in tactical view only. That's it. But some of these challenges are 
pretty difficult. Uh, really looking at you over there, Ziggy the Robot. Mr. Completed in basically 59 seconds as fast as you can do it when you need to do it in a minute. But some of the challenges are extremely brutal and there's no checkpoint select in this game, meaning that if you miss one, you're going to have to replay the entire mission to get another shot at it. And some of these are at the very end of their respective missions. So yeah, that's, that's not a fun time. That is not a fun thing to go for. Now, thankfully, you don't have to do every single challenge in a single run of a level. Thankfully, I'm kind of shocked they didn't make you do that instead because that would have been even more torturous. So thankfully, you don't have to do that, but it's still annoying. So now we have the DLC and Iron Trophies in Revolution and Uprising, getting them both to 100%. So I won't need to talk about these or the base game again, which is kind of nice. So Revolution is not too difficult. It's around the 3 out of 10, takes around 10 hours. Uh, it's just I hate the map and I hate certain designs with the map and sort of the general bugginess of this one just because of the way it's designed and the verticality of it. So this is the Easter Egg Trophy. The Easter Egg's pretty easy. We actually did it either first or second try. I think, was it first try? No, it was second try because the first try we screwed up and we were taking too long to do it. So we just decided to reset. It's it's not a very difficult Easter Egg, especially with the bank being there. You can easily go withdraw points. You can have the power on, so that's not too bad. Fling 10 zombies in one game you might even get while going for the Easter Egg. Uh, round 10 without turning on the power. Just run around and get good weapons in the starting building like the AN-94 and you're good to go. Uh, use This is the last trophy I got. It gave me a little more trouble than I expected. It would have been a lot easier had I used the bank though and I was just kind of stupid about that or couldn't get the bank to work one thing or the other. And that one, I think that might be the rarest trophy in the DLC. Yeah, okay, that's that's actually surprising given turn sitting down there. Uh, five zombies with a single sliquifier shot. That's pretty easy. Face the dragon head on before reaching round two is also very easy, especially if you use the bank. Uh, then you have to re and revive yourself, which has to be done with who's who, not quick revive. Then we have the turned game mode. This was specific to this DLC. It was a special game mode. This one was pretty difficult to do legitimately back in the day, and it would be impossible to do legitimately today, but you can very easily boost all three trophies with... I think you can actually do it with just one other person, so that's not too bad. So that's Revolution. Uprising is around the same level of difficulty, around a 3 out of 10 in difficulty, not, not too challenging. So this is not actually the Easter Egg trophy. This is only part of the Easter Egg. It's for getting to the bridge, but it's not the actual Easter Egg trophy. It's just a part of it. Actually, both of these are also required to complete the Easter Egg, obtaining Hell's Retriever and completing the cycle three total times. So all of those are actually required to complete the Easter Egg. And as you can see, I got like all of these on whatever the first day is that the map came out. Uh, this one, convert a weapon using a kit, is very easy. You want to do that with the Blundergad. I mean, only the Blundergad and the Sweeper can be converted. Then this is the last trophy I got. It's actually pretty easy. I got it on like my second try when I started because the first time I was playing on the original for some reason and just being dumb and making stupid decisions. You just have to have Brutus run around the map and lock down nine specific things. It's really not that hard if you do it early on in the game. Uh, ten zombies with a single usage of Electric Cherry. It's actually best to let yourself get down because you do a lot more damage if you go down with it in this game. Uh, then you have to open the door without spending points. That's basically unmissable. Survive an entire round on the bridge on round 15 or greater. That's honestly not that difficult. A lot of people have probably done that without even realizing. Uh, use and upgrade all traps before round 10. That one's very easy. There's only one trap you actually have to upgrade. You can get plenty of points. And finally, Pop Goes the Weasel. This is the actual Easter egg for the map. This Easter egg takes time because you have to go through three cycles with the bridge. But it's not really a difficult Easter egg, so you don't have to worry too much. So again, both of those DLCs are around a 3 out of 10, 10 hours probably to complete each of them. Not too bad, not, not too unreasonable at all. Then you have Vengeance and Apocalypse. This is where the difficulty really ramps up. And with Buried, I'm still missing two trophies. Now, I'm kind of surprised I didn't get this one back in the day because you can do it on easy. I need to go ahead and do that this week because it's not really that hard. Uh, I'll talk about the other trophies when I start getting trophies in the DLCs because there's only two DLCs now to talk about. But I do know that this is a very, very annoying four-player Easter egg. Not looking forward to doing this one at all. And then finally, there is Apocalypse Origins. Uh, I only earned three trophies on this map because I never learned this map. I know it's a great map, but I suck at this map. I never learned it well. I'm not good at it, but I think you can do everything on easy at least, except for the Easter egg. So... I'll figure it out eventually, and 
I want to say you might actually be able to do this Easter egg solo. I know you can in Black Ops 3. I don't know if you can in Black Ops 2. But maybe you can do it solo. I'm not 100% sure on that. But if you can, that would be kind of nice to know. Even though there's other trophies that require multiple people. So, yeah, that's it for Black Ops 2 to talk about today. Oh, wait, I already synced it, didn't I? I I'm pretty sure I did. Anyway, level 72, 48%, 18,003 total trophies, 426 platinums, 2420 golds, 4734 silvers, 10,423 bronzes. So, plans for the upcoming weeks. Naturally, with everything that's going on with the virus, I am now unfortunately joining millions of other people in the U.S. that are now out of work. So I don't know exactly what schedules are going to look like because you would think it would mean more free time, but I really got to, I want to try to find another job as soon as possible because I don't like being out of work for long periods of time. You know, that's, that's not a good thing. So I'll be busy with a lot. To be fair, I was already looking for a better job anyway, so I'm not that surprised that I'm gone now, but I'd still like to find something sooner rather than later, obviously. But with the whole, with the lockdown and the virus and everything, I mean, not really lockdown, but just the social distancing and isolation and all that kind of stuff, there's the very real chance I'm going to be stuck inside for a few weeks without really being able to get any opportunities and stuff unless I get someone to work from home. So I don't know what my schedule is going to be look like. I'm going to be busy looking for other stuff and trying to, you know actually try to be active and walk around because I know that I can't go to the apartment gym or anything so we'll see what everything turns out to be I don't know exactly how things are going to be but I'm going to try to keep the consistent schedule of you know Thursday Friday maybe Saturday as well for streaming so I'm going to do my best to keep up with that from now on I can hopefully I'll be able to do better with it and yeah that's really about it i have other videos that are going to be ready to be uploaded i got challenge videos i'm still working on recording down i'm also i think i'm gonna play fallout new vegas and just play a run of the game just for fun again and really you know try to get all the unique items and stuff in a single playthrough just to enjoy the game again because it's been a long time since i've done that and i might do the same for fallout 3 do another max skills run because I actually lost my previous max skills run file as unfortunate as that is given how much time that took to do so we'll see what happens with all that now the funny thing or not funny but the crazy thing about this is I might have already had the virus back in last November because I had a lot of the symptoms of it so it is possible that I had it back in November and got past it which would mean that I at least now have a little bit of immunity to it which is nice so everyone out there stay safe stay self-isolated follow the rules and the laws like don't go out and encounter other people only go out if it's really 100% necessary either either because you still have a job or because you have to go to the grocery store or pharmacy or something don't go out to other places and screw around and risk getting people infected. It's just not, it's just going to make things worse. If we all just sort of lock down for a couple of weeks here, then it'll pass a lot faster if people just don't really go out. Taking, take this from someone in the healthcare field that that's the best thing we can do right now. So just try to do social distance do listen to that just don't go out unless it's absolutely necessary if we all sort of self quarantine self lockdown for two maybe three weeks then it'll be over pretty quickly people aren't going out it can't really spread so yeah anyway hope you guys enjoyed the video i will see you guys for hopefully normal schedule this week and i don't know what kind of challenge runs i'm going to be doing once i finish up the current new vegas and fallout 3 runs even though i have other ideas for the future that i'd love to consider trying out so hope you guys enjoyed the video and see you for the next one